Is your machine slowing down? When was the last time you cleaned it? I can help you with that. Today we're taking apart our Singer 4452, which is also equivalent to the Singer 4432, um, and that's their heavy duty line. So we're gonna take it apart, get all those dust gobs out of there, and get it back together. You'll need a couple supplies today, including a paper towel or napkin to put the dust on, tweezers, a key or screwdriver that may have come with your machine, a brush to help you get all the lint out, and some sort of duster to help control all of that. Start off by unthreading your machine and taking out any thread posts. Grab your duster and give your machine a light dusting to get all of that surface dust off. It's important to note that we never blow into or used canned air on the insides of our machine. Over time, the small amounts of moisture can build up and actually cause the insides to rust. Also, I would encourage you to unplug your machine for safety's sake. For the video, I left it plugged in so that you could see the light inside the machine. Next, take your bobbin out and any residual threads. You're going to want to remove your presser foot by pressing up on the lever on the back, and then you're going to want to remove your needle. There's a screw to one side that you can turn by hand. Loosen it and pull the needle straight down and out. Set your presser foot and needle off to the side. Now we're going to get into the machine. Grab your key or screwdriver and unscrew the two screws on the top of your faceplate. To remove the faceplate, you're going to want to apply pressure gently to the back of that opening and lift up at a 45 degree angle. Be careful to not hit that presser foot post. It should lift up and away easily. Holy cow, look at all of that in there. Now normally, I clean my machine once a week. I am a heavy daily sewer with cotton thread and this is the accumulation that I get. Now if you're only an occasional sewer, you might not need to clean that often. Maybe not even once a month. But it's always good to get in there, just check it out and dust it, clean it up. Start off by using your duster to dust the back of your faceplate. And now grab your tweezers and brush so that we can really get inside that machine. Start off by using your tweezers to grab some of those bigger chunks. If you use cotton thread like me, those chunks tend to stick together and it's a lot easier to get them out using the tweezers right out of the gate. Carefully get in between all the pieces and once you grab those chunks, this is a great time to use your tissue or napkin to put those chunks on so you don't have to worry about them getting all over the place in your workspace again. Carefully look in there and go around each little arm and piece. Using a angled tweezer also helps to get deeper down in there to pull out from the bottom. You don't think it happens, but a lot of those threads have little microfibers that break off and then start to clump and gather down deep in the bottom. Ugh, look at that guy. So to re... re so to reiterate, for safety's sake, this is why you want to cut the power to your machine while you do this. You're in there with your hands and with tweezers. You wouldn't want to accidentally hit the presser foot and make the machine go. There's a lot of little pieces in there, and you don't want anything to be in the way of when it's moving. So even when you're using those tweezers, be careful of all those little pieces and parts. Make sure you get in between those feed dogs too, because sometimes the thread builds up in chunks in between those slots. Now grab your brush and start to brush together a lot of the little fibers that may have dispersed while you were pulling those big chunks out. Really get in there and brush them together so then you can grab them again with your tweezers and pull them out. Holy cow, look at that. Even using your brush to pull some of those big pieces up from the bottom is great. I use the brush that comes with the machine. It's a synthetic bristle brush, which is great for creating cling to those fibers to get them out. But you can use any brush around the house. A natural bristle brush might not be advised because it can create more offshoots of fiber than you're really picking up. Now that we've cleaned all around the bobbin housing, we're gonna get into the bobbin housing itself. It's this black plastic piece in the middle that actually comes out of the machine. And that's great because there's a lot of fiber that builds up underneath. Grab your key or screwdriver. 
I actually put a little magnet on mine to help with keeping the screws attached to the device while you're taking it out because they're tiny. My bobbin housing is really tight and sometimes you can just pull it out with your fingers. However mine was manufactured, it's too difficult to do so and I actually have to remove this little arm by unscrewing two little screws. They are tiny and this is why I put a magnet on my key so that it'll pull right out for me and it won't have a chance to fall into the machine. I grab my tweezers to help me remove that little arm and now I'm ready to remove the bobbin housing. Just gently lift up and out and you can see in there it kind of looks like a cotton candy machine with how much fiber is built up. Using your tweezers again Find an edge and pull some of those bigger chunks out. They mat together because it's under the bobbin housing, so it's much more compressed and easy to pull out. Use your brush to sweep up any remaining particles and grab them with your tweezers. In the center, you may grab what is called the oil wick. and You might pull it out, and that's totally fine. It's made to do that but don't throw it out. Just gently push it back down in, make sure it stays in there. That's what keeps your inner machine housing oiled. We'll go over that in a future video. So now that you've cleaned out most of the bobbin housing, your power should be off to your machine, but you can still use the flywheel on the side to turn the mechanisms inside so that you can get all the way around that bobbin housing. So by turning it, you can get in there with your tweezers and brush and still get out a lot of those little chunks that hide underneath. By moving the pieces, some of those chunks may have moved internally so that you can get around them on the sides. At this point, you should be pretty clean. Take a final look, get any remaining debris out, and you're gonna wanna grab the actual black bobbin housing, give it a good brushing, and prepare to put the machine back together. Grab your bobbin housing. There's a note on the front that denotes which way is front. It should gently set back in. Grab the arm that you took off and put the screws back in. Gently tighten them. They don't need to be overly tight. Once you have them set, check to make sure that there's enough give between the arm and the bobbin housing that a thread can pass through it. Now take your faceplate and put it back on the same way you took it off, gently setting into place. Don't forget to put the screws back in. Gently tighten them down. I go by hand at first and then give a final twist with the key. Now let's get into the upper mechanism, a place that is often forgotten when cleaning your machine. There's a single screw on the side of the machine right above the thread cutter. The screw is longer than you think, so Get in there, get it out, and now you're going to gently but firmly lift off the cover. The first place you want to check for buildup is that back of the thread cutter. Get in there with your tweezers and pull out any chunks, grab your duster, and dust out the inside. A majority of your buildup here is going to be at that upper thread guide right above the needle. Go ahead and grab that, pull it out and then grab your brush to do a majority of the rest of this machine. As you can see, I put my duster down to help minimize how much dust gets back into the lower housing of the machine. Be very, very careful in this upper piece as again, there are many small moving parts that you don't wanna break off. Just gently go over it, and if the dust falls down onto your duster, perfect, that's where you want it to go. Once you have it all cleaned out, we're going to put it back together. There's a plastic guide that goes into a metal pin. Line those up and all of the slots on top. Be firm but gentle when attaching them back together as they will click into place. Now don't forget to put the screw back. You're almost done. For final assembly, put your presser foot back on and put the needle back in place. Remember the needle goes with the flat portion to the back and it's straight up and in and gently tighten. Use your flywheel to make sure everything is working smoothly before you put power back to your machine. Clean up by putting everything back in the front box of the machine. Place your bobbin in and thread your upper. If you need more help with that, check out my other videos on this channel. Once you're all threaded, you are ready to go with your next project. 
So now that you got all those dust bunnies out of there, hopefully your machine is back running at tip top shape. Now if you have any questions or concerns, drop them in the comments below. I am happy to help you out as much as I can and make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and ring that bell for notifications for our next video on sewing tips and tutorials. I'm Stacy, and I'll see you between the seams. Thank you.